Here's a bit of TOK or theory of knowledge for you. Those of you who have finished going through and studying cellular respiration at the higher level, you've covered lots of details. You know everything about glycolysis, the link reaction, the Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. You understand the words like chemiosmosis and oxidative phosphorylation. You understand exactly what this weird looking shoe is. It's actually mitochondria and what each part is important for you can relate the structure to its actual function and you're able to explain exactly how atp is made in this process you know how to use words like nadh and fadh2 you know how to use words like decarboxylation as well so what's the point here the idea here is that this thing was a bit of a paradigm shift the whole idea that atp is made and it's linked to electrons moving down the inner mitochondrial membrane it was called the chemiosmotic theory remember in science we still tend to call things theories but a theory in science is very different from a theory in practical life it's still the best explanation based on the evidence and so this has become something that it's well accepted well accepted by scientists and it's led to all kinds of new changes in the way that we think about diseases related to um, problems with the mitochondria so this chemiosmotic theory paradigm shift actually happened quite a while ago in 1961 this dude right here peter mitchell proposed this idea of chemiosmosis and nobody was really into it so he was saying what we all know now is that the electron transport moving is coupled to atp synthesis so the moving of that helps to move protons across builds up a concentration gradient and then comes back out and then goes through atp synthase and then helps us to produce atp ATP. This idea was radically different from what came before. It wasn't accepted till years, years later. And finally, in 1978, he won the Nobel Prize for chemistry for its understanding, the biochemistry of what's happening in mitochondria. So radically different idea. And during different during his actual speech, he made a few quotes that were very, you know, humbling for scientists. And it's a good. Uh, example there's multiple examples in science and the history of science but he talked about taking an imaginative leap forward and other scientists being hell-bent on trying to falsify it that's how science works you're supposed to do that you put on an idea people have to test your hypotheses and their goal is to try to falsify it if they cannot falsify it and it becomes the next best explanation then you have developed a new theory and until something else new comes along and evidence destroys that previous theory that's going to be what's strongly accepted so things that exist today like gravitational theory at atomic theory uh, electromagnetic theory chemiosmotic theory and of course evolutionary theory and many other things these are still the best explanations that exist for explaining scientific uh, phenomena and he's also very humble in saying that accidents of fortune have brought me to this place so by going out on a limb he could have been wrong you know there was uh, just as high of a chance of him being wrong but when he put his ideas together he decided to present this all the other scientists they're all pretty smart people as well too so they have to go through this process of really testing these theories out to make sure that they can actually stick so that's an idea an example of a paradigm shift in science uh, you could write about that for some of your tok essays and bringing in some other examples as well too